Yo, what is going on everybody? Executives here coming at you with the Vanilla Warlock PvP Guide. Now, in this video I'm going to show everything from talents to curses to pets, everything that you need to know to be the best PvP Warlock uh, in Vanilla. So first off, I'm going to start off with talents. Now, I've got a few builds here, uh, but the first build I'm going to start off is a Soul Link build. Now what Soul Link is, uh, is when 30% of all the damage you take by the caster is basically transferred to your pet. So if you have a Voidwalker out, Voidwalkers generally have a lot of health, a lot of armor, um, it's going to be split between you and your Voidwalker. Uh, so we also have that improved Voidwalker talent. Now basically what this spec is, is it's very good for dueling. Um, it's very good for 1v1s. Uh, and dueling. So if you're fighting warriors, rogues, hunters, mages, whatever it is, um, it's generally very good, uh, especially against melee. Um, the reason for this is because if you fight a warrior or if you fight a rogue or if you fight, you know, whatever it is, um, since you have uh, the soul link talent, 30% of all the damage is trans transferred between you and your pet. Um, so they're not going to be doing as much damage as if it was just all the damage being transferred to you. Also, you have improved drain life. Um, so generally, you can just spam drain life and heal up both you and your pet by drain lifing and then health funneling into your pet. Um, but yeah, so the next uh, build I got here is a build that um, Goth uses. Uh, also, Orcbit showed in his video, um, but I'm going to show uh, what I like. So um, we've got a destruction build here with Conflagrate. Uh, and Ruin. Um, this build is very, very good for PvP. In fact, this is the build I would run if I was going to play a Warlock in PvP. Uh, you got Improved Shadow Bolt, Bane, uh, Devastation, you've got Shadow Burn, Improved Searing Pain, Destructive Reach, Immolate, blah, 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 blah. But most important thing is Conflagrate here. Conflagrate hits so hard, uh, especially after you, uh, especially if it crits, um, and it's just a very good instant cast spell. Now with this build, you also get uh, Nightfall, uh, and Grim Reach and a bunch of stuff like that, like Amplify Curse. Um, and then if you're very not geared at all, like if you're very new, um, I'd take two points out of Grim Reach and I might even put it into Improved improved Health Stone. Um, so there's a lot of uh, custom, there's a lot of a lot of things you can customize. I don't know why I'm having a stroke, but you, there's a lot of things you can customize with uh, this build. Like you, for instance, you could take stuff in Pyroclasm stuff into Aftermath. Uh, it's all very fun. You can, you know, it's all very customizable. Now the reason why I take Shadowburn uh, instead of a po another point into Improved Searing Pain is because it's just another instant cast spell. It does cost a Soul Shard, um, but it does grant you one if you kill the target with a uh, Shadowburn on it. Um, but generally, 9 times out of 10 you're going to be fighting melee as a Warlock. Um, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to start uh, off with are pets. So as a Warlock, you've got a variety of pets. Uh, but the first one I'll start off is with a Fell Hunter. Now the reason why I like Fell Hunter so much, the reason why I probably, if I would play a Warlock, is run a Fell Hunter permanently, is because of this spell called Devour Magic. Basically what it does is it purges one harmful magic effect from, or I'm sorry, it purges one beneficial magic effect from the enemy or one harmful effect from yourself. So what this means is that you can purge your enemy. So if he casts an Ice Barrier, Arcane Intellect, um, you know, anything that's magical, even if buffs like a Dire Maul buffs or uh, uh, scrolls like a scroll of strength, a scroll of intellect, something like that, you can purge it off of them. Um, so this is very, very, very good for PvP, especially against fighting other casters, because you can purge their buffs like their demon armor, um, their arcane intellect, uh, and pally buffs like freedom uh, and stuff like that. So Devour Magic is very good. Also, if you get hodged, if you get feared, if you get uh, Goblin Rocket Helm, Tidal Charm, whatever it is, you can purge yourself. So if you have some Rep Paladin that uh, that runs up to you uh, and is going to hodge you for four seconds, you know, you can purge yourself. So it's very cool. Uh, well, you know, I look like a retard now, but yeah, you're able to you're able to dispel yourself from all uh, from one magical effect. So whether it's a Frostbolt Slow or a Hodge or something like that. You also have uh, the most overpowered pet in the game, Succubus. Now, Succubus has the most overpowered spell in the game, Seduction, especially if you're uh, Alliance, or I'm sorry, especially if you're Horde fighting Alliance because they don't have uh, Will of the Forsaken. So what Succubus has is they have Seduction. Seduces the target, preventing all actions for up to 15 seconds. Any damage caused will remove this effect. Now, the reason why Seduction is so broken is because you're able to seduce the target, put a curse of elements up and then cast your four second soul fire and by the time 
the sulfire hits, you'd put up, you know, an agony or a corruption or something, and they're already half HP by the time they get to you. Sulfire, there are countless of video, countless videos of people popping their like uh, their um, their trinkets, uh, like a talisman of ephemeral power, uh, seducing a target, and then just soul firing for like a three or four K crit. It's insane. Um, but what I recommend, oh, and then also you have Void Walker. Now the reason why Void Walker is very good is because of ability called Sacrifice. Now Void Walkers, uh, they're able to sacrifice, so you'd kill the Void Walker, and it sacrifices it, giving you a shield that absorbs about 1900 damage for 30 seconds. While the shield holds, spell casting will not be interrupted by any damage. So the reason why this is super good is because if you're fighting a warrior, if you're fighting a rogue, anything like that, um, your, your abilities aren't going to be like delayed. So it's hard to ex it's hard to explain here, but like if you're casting a fear uh, and you keep getting meleeed, uh, the fear would be longer and longer cast time. Um, also why this is super good especially against fighting warriors is because if you have an absorb on you the warrior does not gain any rage from auto attacks um, so having a, a void walker out especially against fighting melee is very good now i like permanently running a fell hunter especially in battlegrounds because even though basically nine times out of ten every fight you're going to run into is a warrior a hunter rogue whatever it is a melee dps there's still that a uh, few chances that you do fight in fight a mage or a priest or another warlock and if that's the case you will just completely annihilate them you have a interrupt on a 30 second cooldown that prevents all school of magic from being cast for eight seconds if you actually land it and it also has a blanket silence for three seconds as well if you miss the kick um you also have that purge so you can purge their buffs on them whether it's a power word shield or ice armor whatever it is you can purge them and also dispel yourself so if you get feared by them uh, you can dispel yourself and it's very 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 good um, so yeah uh, now I'm gonna get into a little bit of rotation here generally you're gonna fight melee like I've been saying a lot um, so I'm gonna give uh, generally this explanation will be given for fighting melee man I don't know why I'm having a stroke today but uh, yeah so let's say a warrior charges into you the first thing you're going to want to want to do is either put up a corruption put up a curse of agony or coil them now the reason is because generally when a warrior charges you he's still in battle stance so if you can coil him right away you're still able to fear right after that and they're not going to be able to get a zerk rage up unless they're like um, uh, undead or something so uh, they're not going to be able to get out this fear and so this allows you to either cast a soul fire this allows you to cast your emulates put up your dots whatever it is um, so with this talent nightfall here the more uh, corruptions you have up on the more targets the more likely chance you are to get an instant cast shadow bolt so you know if a warrior for some reason has a pet or something or if there's more than one target on you i just start to get up corruption on every target that i see i'd uh, put up an amplify curse into an agony especially on melee it's very good uh, and then i'm going to emulate so that's your basic rotation basically you just want to get up dots you want to get the target away from you with fears um, and if they're constantly on you, there's no way maybe they reflected your coil or something like that. You've got a lot of self-healing. So you've got your health stone, um, you've got uh, drain life, you've got a bunch of other self-healing stuff like that. So uh, that's all stuff to keep in mind. Now, also while fighting a melee DPS, if their melee isn't on you, the rotation that I would do is I'd put up your corruption, I'd put up your agony, and then what I do is I'm going to immolate, conflagrate, then immolate. So I'm going to immolate, conflagrate, and then immediately immolate again. So the reason for this is now you've got all three of your dots up, they're rotting from your dots, and if they're going to go around and chase you, you've got a bunch of instant cast spells. You've got your shadow burn, now you've got your conflagrates back off of cooldown, uh, you can generally coil, uh, and if you get lucky with a shadow trance proc, you get an instant cast shadow bolt. Um, so these are all things to keep in mind. Now I'm going to cover a bunch of the Warlock Curses. Now what I think makes a good Warlock a very good Warlock in PvP are a few things. One's pet control, another thing is curses. Um, so I'm going to cover all the curses that a Warlock has and I'm going to tell you what's good and what's bad. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is Curse of Agony here. Now what you do for Curse of Agony is you're always, if you have Amplify Magic, uh, or, I'm sorry, Amplify Curse off of cooldown, you're always going to Amplify Curse and then Agony. Now the reason for this is your Agony is going to hit, um, I think it's 50% harder or something. I don't know, it's, yeah, 50% harder, it's insane. Uh, so that's very, very good, especially against fighting melee DPS. So what you use Curse of Agony for is melee DPS. Now the reason for this is because there's no point in putting up Curse 
Curse of Recklessness on a melee. There's really no point in putting Curse of Weakness on a melee. Um, and then these other curses aren't very good. You want Agony because it's just more of that rot and that, uh, kind of, I guess you could say, spread pressure um, on melee. So for fighting rogues, for fighting uh, warriors, for fighting hunters, I would say put Curse of Agony up. Now for fighting other classes, um, what I'm going to say is put up other curses. So if you're running uh, a succubus pet, Curse of Shadows is very good, as well as Curse of Elements is very good. So if you have a succubus pet and the target is in a fear, if the target is in a, a seduction, I would put Curse of Elements up. Basically what it does is reduces their fire and frost resistance by 75 uh, and increases that damage taken by 10%. So that's 10% more damage on your soul fire or 10% more damage on your shadow bolt and your uh, shadow spells. Um, so that's very good for having a target that's in CC. Once the target's out of CC, I would change uh, the curse. You can only have one curse up at a time. The next thing is for fighting casters. So Curse of Tongues is absolutely broken, especially against fighting casters. Forces the target to speak demonic, slowing their casting time of all spells by 60%. So this is insane, especially against fighting uh, casters that cannot dispel curses. For instance, paladins and priests. They cannot dispel curses, and it just completely destroys them. Fighting mages, putting Curse of Tongue up is very good because this forces them uh, to use uh, decurse. Um, so it's a global for them as well as a global for you. Uh, and generally, you'd want to perk put Curse of Tongues up after you've got some of your dots like Corruption and Immolate up. So you can you put uh, Corruption up, then you have Curse of Tongues, uh, and then if they're very bad they won't realize that Curse of Tongues is on them, or if they're good they'll just continually uh, decurse themselves. Um, and you will also spam it. Also against um, other Warlocks this is very good as well because it makes them uh, cast their casts longer. Uh, if they also have a um, Fell Hunter out, they will be able to dispel it, but what I recommend is that you banish the Fell Hunter. So uh, you banish their pet, they may ba they may banish your pet, you put a Curse of Tongues up, they may put a Curse of Tongues up on you. Um, so Warlock fights are very, uh, very intricate. Um, so yeah, uh, those are a few curses that I would recommend. Curses that I don't recommend, don't waste your time on Curse of Dune. It basically takes uh, a minute for it to actually go off, so if somehow you magically CC the target for a minute, they're going to take uh, a lot of shadow damage. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend Curse of Doom. Uh, I mean, I guess you could Goblin Rocket Helm into like five fears, and then into like a stun, into like, I don't know, a seduction or something, and then, and then maybe Curse of Doom might go off, um, but it's not worth your time. Just don't even waste it. Uh, it's good for uh, PvE, but yeah. Um, Curse of Idiocy, uh, it's also pretty bad. Curse of Recklessness is very good for certain things, but it's very bad for a lot of other things. So it curses the target with Recklessness, increasing their melee attack power by 90, but reducing their armor by 640. Um, and then it will make them immune to fear and horror effects. Now, it's good if you're in like a team fight or something, and you put Curse of Recklessness on like a pally or like a warrior that has a lot of armor, but it's terrible for 1v1s. The reason is because your magic spells don't apply to armor. Armor doesn't apply to magic spells. It's only for melee damage, so it's pretty pointless. Um, and then Curse of Weakness is just kind of bad in my opinion. Reduces damage by 31. That's your max rank spell. That's awful. Just put up Curse of Agony agony um so yeah those are the curses um and then one last thing i wanted to cover well not last thing but one thing i wanted to cover is that if you do have a fell hunter pet out there is a awesome fell hunter macro so um what i would do is i'd put your devour magic on your bars uh, like i have here i'd put one to purge the enemy so i'd purge the enemy once if they have something to dispel on them uh, and then i'd also have one to purge yourself so to dispel yourself now what this macro is, is it's target, and then your name, then script cast pet action 4, which would be your fourth action slot on your pet's action bar. So so if your devour magic was over here, it'd be like pet action 7 or something, but since it's here, it's pet action 4. Uh, and then your pet will target the last target. So if we're attacking this character, um, and then he hodges me, I'm going to dispel myself, and then the my pet will continue to attack this target. So that's something else. Um, so yeah. Uh, the last thing I'm going to cover is uh, a few other spells. Um, as a warlock, you've got a bunch of utility. So there's something called spell stones. Now what this is, um, is under your uh, spell book, under your demology page, and you have a lot of variety here. You have something called firestone, soul stone, health stone, spell stone, and um, 
yeah, I think that's it. But basically what a Firestone is, is it increases, I think it enchants your main hand weapon with a fire attack, uh, granting extra damage. I don't think it's very good, don't waste your time on a Firestone. But what you definitely need to make are major health stones. This is a lot of self-healing, 1200 health, and it has a chance to crit to 2400 I think. It's very good. Uh, also you have soul stones that you can create. Uh, a soul stone basically lets you resurrect if you've died. I would do a major soul stone. Um, and then last but not least is a spell stone. Now spell stones are super, super, super cool. Basically what it does is it replaces your offhand uh, and when equipped and used, the major spell stone removes all magical effects from the caster and will absorb 900 magic damage for one minute. Um, and then if you have that equipped, you also increase your critical strike with spells by 1%. Now the reason why spell stones are so awesome is that if you are spell locked, whether it's an improved counter spell or a uh, just a blanket silence from like a priest or if you have a bunch of dots on you or if you have like frost mate bolt uh, frost bolt um, slows on you if you pop your spell stone it will remove all of those so all harmful magic effects if you use your spell stone it will remove all of those harmful magic effects so it'll remove the silence it will remove the slow it will remove um all the dots but you can't be in cc so it's not like you can use it in a fear and it will remove the fear um, also, in addition to that, it will absorb an extra 900 magic damage. So if they cast another frost bolt, or if they put another dot on you, it's just going to absorb until this is gone. So spell stones are very, very, very awesome for PvP, only when fighting against casters. Um, so yeah, that's uh, basically Warlock. Um, you've got a lot of utility with your coil, your fears, uh, your drain life. You've got a lot of self-healing uh, with coil, drain life, uh, spell. Uh, I'm sorry, health stone. Um, and then you're able to purge yourself, you're able to purge the enemy. Uh, you've got instant cast damage like Shadow Burn, uh, and maybe if you get lucky with a uh, Corruption proc, you get an instant cast Shadow Bolt. Um, now another thing that's good is you've got your Demon Armor as well, it increases your armor by 570, and increases your resistance to Shadow effects by 15, and restores 15 health every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. Um, so yeah, uh, I basically covered just about everything. I'm not going to really cover engineering uh, in this guide. The reason for that is because uh, I I've already covered engineering in like every other guide. You know, all your trinkets, your your uh, your netomatic projectors, your grenades, uh, your rocket helms. Those are all very broken. I don't really have to cover that uh, again. Um, last thing I think I'll cover are uh, a few things, a few ways you can outplay your opponents. So one thing I mentioned earlier is that you can banish uh, your the enemy's pet so if you're fighting if you're doing a, a warlock 1v1 you're 1v1ing another warlock you can banish their pet um, another good thing is if you're 1v1ing a shadow priest curse of tongues or if you're 1v1ing a red paladin curse of tongues is very good um, also you can bait out uh, your death coil with like an instant cast i finally got shadow trance if i like back up i can shadow bolt and then death coil right away and it makes basically looks like two death coils it's the same animation it looks very cool um, and then another thing that you used to be able, or not used to be able to, but if you spec into Curse of Exhaustion, you can have a slow. Um, so if you do Amplify Curse and then Curse of Exhaustion, you can reduce their movement speed by 20%, uh, and then it allows you to kite a little bit. Um, so yeah, it also one last thing, you've got Life Tap, uh, converts 420 health into 420 mana. Um, so if you're low on mana, you can just Life Tap, Life Tap, Life Tap, and then Death Coil, or life tap and then into drain life and you'll heal for a decent amount. Now this is bugged on the server, but um, yeah, drain life does generally heal for about 130 a tick. Uh, you also have your shadow burns, so uh, soul shard management is a big thing in PvP. Uh, you generally either run out of soul shards or you have a lot to spare. Um, so right before the target's about to die, I would always shadow burn them or I would sit there and spam uh, drain soul. If the target dies while you're draining their soul, you get a soul shard. Um, also for short cast spells, let's say you're running low on mana, or if you don't have a chance to get up and immolate, or you already have an immolate and your conflagrate is already on cooldown, you have Searing Pain. Searing Pain does a lot of damage, especially if it crits, um, and it's just something that you can spam, and it's very helpful. Um, remember to fear as fear off of cooldown, shadow burn off of cooldown, conflagrate off of cooldown, all the stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to that macro as, as well as a link to like a few goth videos because you can learn a lot just from watching someone else PvP. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.